Hello brothers and sisters. Let's look at more scriptural evidence that the laws of God are not dead. Now everyone knows that Jesus Christ came, walked the perfect walk in the laws of God. And then he told us to follow him and be holy as he is holy, to do as he do. But most of Christians today do not believe in following Jesus because it requires them to follow the laws of God by faith. So that's the difference. It is not the works or your deeds that will save you anymore. It is only your faith. Your faith in Jesus Christ dying on the cross for your sins and your faith to walk as he walked. So you apply that faith to the laws now that you may be viewed as a holy people by walking in the laws. Let's go take a look at what Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 19, starting at verse 17. Uh, there was a, one of the disciples asked him a question. He said, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? That was the question. Now let's start at 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. And then guess what? Jesus started to name some of the commandments. See, the Ten Commandments is part of God's law. Every commandment that God gives becomes law. So the laws of God or the commandments of God is one and the same. So those who keep the commandments of God is called the saints. Turn to Revelations 12. And we're going to read 17. It says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman who is the woman the woman is Israel Israel physical and uh, spiritual Israel together as one and the body of Christ see the new, the new Israel both Jew and Gentile now in the body of Christ that's the new Israel spiritual Israel let's read on and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. The remnant is the ones who didn't make it to the place of safety in the wilderness. Which could keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's right. You see, the saints are the ones who keep the commandments of God. They obey the commandments of God. They follow the commandments of God. They live the commandments of God. Now remember, the commandments of God is also called the laws of God. So the remnant keep the laws of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So they're following Jesus Christ. They're following his ways. They walk in as he walked on this earth as Jesus commanded us to do. Now this is after you have grace. Grace is a free gift from God. It is it is a part of your walk, but in a sense it's kind of separate because grace in itself is a free gift from God which doesn't require any works whatsoever. But by faith you're supposed to believe in Jesus Christ and follow him. So that's the next step. Now that you believe in Jesus Christ, you have faith on the cross for your work, for your, uh, for your soul. Now, what's the next step in, in being a follower of Jesus Christ? Obey Him, and He gives you commandments all through the Testament. Now you have to write these commandments down and start following them. So you can start with Matthews and start writing down Jesus Christ. Get a tablet, write down the commandments. These are now the new Christian's laws. 
But guess what? They all match the Old Testament laws. You're going to see as you write down each one and get an understanding of each one. You're going to find out that the Old Testament and New Testament go hand in hand. They together. They're not separate. They are one. You need more evidence? Go to Revelation chapter 22. And let's read Revelation chapter 22, 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. So here we have again the Lord telling you who his people are. They are the ones that keep his commandments, do his commandments, which are the laws brothers and sisters the laws of God are not dead Jesus said that I have not come to destroy the laws but to fulfill them let me read the whole thing I have not come to destroy the laws or the prophets but to fulfill now what does he mean by that what does he mean by that yeah, he come to do exactly what the law, he come to fulfill the laws. He had to walk in all the laws perfectly to be without sin. Number two, he had to fulfill the prophecies about himself, which he did. All the way up to the point where he rose up to the left, uh, to the right hand side of the father at the throne. But there are other prophecies left to be fulfilled. So how can you call the Old Testament old, brothers and sisters? It's a trickery. It's a game. It's a mind game. And we know that today's society does play a lot of mind games on us. You see, that Old Testament should have been called the Active Testament. And the New Testament should have been called the Covenant to Come. You see... The Old Testament should be called the covenant and the New Testament should be called the covenant to come because the new covenant that Jesus Christ is bringing to us is not going to be given to us until he calls us up during the first fruits resurrection. Y'all get it? Right now you're enduring until that moment. So that you could partake in this new covenant. The new covenant is not enacted. Right now. Right now by faith. You are hoping on that. To make it. To that new covenant. That's what you're doing right now. That's what uh, the scriptures explain. The new covenant is only after. You are given that new body. The new spiritual body. And you become just like Christ and you partake in inheritance and everything else that the Father has for you. You become co-inheritors with Christ. Merge with him, his bride. And then at the final great throne judgment after, the, after Christ's thousand year reign, the, all the rest of them will be partakers in the new covenant who make it through the thousand years. Do y'all see how this works? So... The new covenant isn't here yet. The covenant is still here with the laws and everything. It's the Gentiles who's, who messed up, um, who took over the word of God and told you that the old covenant, uh, and told you that the uh, laws of God was dead. They did this to you and they brought their own form of righteousness. That's the new doctrine that Jesus warned us about and Paul warned us about. In Matthews 24 verses 4 and 5 and 11. And if you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 4 and 13 through 15. You have those warnings there from Jesus and Paul. That another doctrine would surface. And they warning you. Okay if you hear another Jesus then you better, you know, look out. You know, know the scriptures. Or you will be deceived. And that's exactly what happened when 
when the Catholic Church was formed and started to rise in power, it got with Emperor Roman Constantine, with the popes, and over hundreds of years, they slowly brought forth them this new doctrine, subtly, sometimes forcefully. And then uh, once they took control, the Protestant churches broke away because they knew there was a lot of paganism in it. But even today, the paganistic churches have been infiltrated. They have been infiltrated, y'all. And you as saints need to look this stuff up and know the history of, of Christianity from the time of Christ, before Christ, up until Christ, and after Christ, and even all the way up to this day so you can get a clear picture of what happened to the followers of Jesus. What happened to the Word of God, period? What happened to the commandments of God that was eternal? Not one jot of, Jesus Christ said, not one jot of tittle shall pass away from the law. Do you believe him or do you believe the Pope who said that the law was dead? You take your pick today. Today's Christianity comes from the Popes. Const Roman Emperor Constantine. It comes from Rome. And they teach against the Word of God and put up their laws and their word and their form of righteousness, righteousness for you to follow. So the word of God is telling you, my laws are eternal. Jesus Christ is telling you, the laws, not one jot or one tittle will pass away from the law till all things be fulfilled. Has all the prophecies been fulfilled? No. Is the thousand year reign with the law uh, over? No. So how was the law gone? Because your pastor and preacher taught you that? Because it was passed down from generation? to generation and it's all tradition for you to sit there and go crazy because somebody said do the laws well I'm telling you to come away from that come to Israel come to Israelite Christianity come within the body of Christ all the believers fulfill the law by faith by love but remember Galatians chapter 4 verse Galatians chapter 5 verse 14 says all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thy shall love thy neighbors thyself. That one word is love. Love will fulfill all the laws if you apply it to every area of your life. Jesus gave us another way to fulfill, another way to view and to fulfill the law through the one word love. So that we may be a holy nation. Because love will not fight, love will not. Um, conquer well well love will conquer all things uh, that are evil but what I meant was competitive you know you won't be competitive and, and fighting one another like that uh, love is kind patient long suffering gentle love bears with you love works with you love works around things love comes together and creates solutions to problems love is the key to fulfilling all the law inside the body of christ by faith it's no longer by your deeds or your works that you be saved but only faith in Jesus Christ and with that same faith you are to apply it to the laws as well by faith and fulfill those. Now if you stumble you have an advocate called Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua Mashiach. So this is just a little quick little, oh no, this is 14 minutes worth of stuff. <laughs> Alright, we're going to end this video so y'all do your own work and research about the laws of God. It's clearly spelled out. If you understand that the laws aren't dead, you'll understand with all the writings of Paul. And sometimes Paul talks about um, the law of the Spirit, and he doesn't mention it. Now there's two laws. There's the laws of the Spirit, and then there's the laws of sin and death. And sometimes he doesn't put a marker on there and say, okay, I'm talking about the law of Spirit now versus the law of death. You know, so you got to pretty much figure that out 
all right y'all be blessed